Misty scenes seem to draw us in and they're relaxing and serene. And our tutorial today is about this one. I mean, this photo is black and white, but I would like to paint it with a little bit of a tinge of color. Here's a cheat sheet. That does look gray. And let's see about this part over here. It looks like. Also gray, just more of a stark gray. And let's see what this looks like. I'm going to start with the pinker color and I'm putting it on very light. I'm going to tip my paper so that a bead forms as I go down and keeps dripping down so that there's smoothness. I'm not going to go back over that. And as I go down with this very wet brush, I'm going to put in a little bit of more of the blue. You have to have very watery paint to keep this bead going. So see it's changing color, just gradually changing color. It helps also to have a lot of paint mixed. And even in this, with the fog and everything, the horizon is lighter than the sky. So now I'm just adding water. A little bit of blue and more water. So you don't have to rush. You can take your time. You just have to keep that bead going. Now I'm just going to keep adding water for a while as I go down. Now I went into the, well now I'm getting to where there's some ground and so I'm going to get into some of this slightly greener color. I wanted to go totally without touching the background again, but this drip is uh, bothering me. So what I should have done, I realize now, is that I should have dried that off so that I was working on all dry paper. And I'm going to try just filling it in. Let's move on and figure that out as we go. So I'm still going to be using this color in my greens. And there's, all, there's quite a few um, shadows in here and a lot of little dips. Some quite dark, others not as dark. The next thing I'm going to do is take off the frisket. Frisket has a tendency to leave sharp edges and I want to soften those as I go while I'm painting in detail. This little eraser, it looks a mess, it's pretty old. Uh, it works wonders for taking frisket off. You can also use masking tape or your finger. Now some of the detail we're going to put in is still those same colors that are down here. The tops of the trees just make a little bit of contrast with with the background. And then these further back ones yet, they are have a little bit of a smoother top because the, you see less detail because they're further away. That one got very green. I'm going to lift a bit of that and put some of the pinker color in there. Getting this misty look is getting your colors light enough. Some more of the underneath shadows needs to be a little bit 
darker than I need it. Dip my brush, dry it off a little, and soften the edges of that. And I want to sharp soften this white line. And some of it's starting to form a slightly sharp edge. And so I'm going to just dampen that top edge and see if I can get rid of some of it. And we could even put, you know, some more really faint ones back here and make more of a line across this field and just let it be a slight impression by, um, by dabbing it as it dries. This is a Silver Atelier Squirrel Blend Brush, size 00, and it looks all bushy and fluffy, but it makes a lovely point. And I'm going to start putting some details into these grasses. I might need an even better point than that for some of this. So I want the top to still be mostly white there. I'm going to fill that area in a bit. And these fences to diminish. All of the grasses at the bottom need a little bit of color. Now I'm making some good dark color to put into some of these areas where dark is some of the fence going. I'm adding a little bit of red and yellow to my mix to make a brown for these fences. And there we've got some good brown. I'm just going to go over top of things. little dips and divots in the ground. I'm going to put some of them. They get smaller as they go back and lighter. They kind of end about here. Some right up by the fence. branches down and so the bottom doesn't have snow on it. And the branches show in some places. You could also do this with an ink pen if you wanted to with paint. You just apply it with a brush. Let me show you. Take my color, put it on both sides, and then you can Get these fine lines in your painting, and it's still a watercolor paint. And back here, it's definitely easier to use this because it's far enough away that the lines are pretty little back there. And there's a whole bunch of places where there's just a blade or two of grass sticking out. And they get smaller as they go back, and eventually you don't see them at all. And of course the ones in the front would be a little bit darker. Now we're going to put a little bit of detail into these trees. And I'm going to go with the brush again, I mean with the pen again, to get them as fine lined as possible. But I'm trying to make these back branches even finer, but they do get darker as they come down. This one's a little bit closer, so the branches can be a little bit more defined. But still, at the top, I want them very light, so I'm just pressing very lightly. Now 
I'm getting some very wet paint, but on my small brush and this tree that's in the front, I'm going to define it. I have some of the pinker gray, and this tree in the front is, has a whiter, frosty look. And the ones behind it. And then I'm going to quickly spread that out and soften it in with the rest so that this tree up front suddenly pops forward just a little bit on one of you. And then I'm going to take some of the gray green and also define around this tree that's more in the front. I don't want much definition. Another thing I just want to do is go over these areas where I had the frisket so that it's not white white. Now right away when I take the tape off I start to notice things and one thing that I've noticed is that this gets too sharp for a misty day even though it's close up. And so I'm going to just soften these edges of this fence, especially this front part of it. And the snow, the bottom edge of the snow. I'm going to let some of the color go up into it. It's really good to get up and walk around and look at your painting, and then you don't have to do all of this. When I take the time to get up and walk around or look at my painting from a distance, I will see mistakes like this, for this area that's too dark in the front. But when you're right in front of it, your mind starts saying, this is the way it should look. If you're enjoying this video, hit the like button and give me a shout out to your friends. <laughs>